Um, we have a returning guest today. Um, his better half couldn't make it, but he is with us, Evan. Evan, how are you, sir? Hey, everybody. Again, I'm David Kafka. I'm your host for tonight. I'm coming to you live from uh, Ambergris Key at Mahogany Bay Resort and Beach Club, a curio by Hilton. And um, Evan is coming to you from where? Where are you at today, Evan? I'm at my house just outside of Hopkins on the mainland. All right. Very good. And Serena is coming to us from Florida. And so we have, uh, I think we have some, we have some really good questions today um, that were pre-submitted. And so we will kind of get rolling in that. And then what we'll do is um, just for everybody who might be new, Evan, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from originally, how long you've been in Belize and kind of, you know, what you're doing because you have many <laughs> different jobs. Yes. Um, what do you do to give back to the community? Um, cause I know you have a very special project that you and your wife run. Um, mm -hmm. so kind of tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Um, I've been in Belize for about almost eight years now. And uh, we're from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, we moved down here for a change of pace, um, a different lifestyle. Um, didn't want to be in the rat race anymore. Um, what, in, what we loved about Belize was it's uh, at your own pace. And if it doesn't happen today, that's okay. There's always tomorrow. Um, there's no go, 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 push, push, push. So um, we, we really enjoy it down here. Uh, we run a full-time construction company. Uh, we build homes. Uh, we clear land. We have heavy equipment rental. Um, we do custom welding and fabrication. We do pretty much everything. We build furniture, custom furniture. Um, I do epoxy showers, epoxy countertops. Um, pretty much the sky's the limit. I'll try anything. Um, we also have a ambulance company. Um, we run that, um, that is the way we give back to Belize. Um, we, we try not to, well, we don't make a profit off of anything in that company. Um, everything, well, a lot of the money that our construction company makes pays the wages, salaries, fuel, administrative and everything for our ambulance company. Um, we notice that there is very much a lacking, um, ambulance service in the country. So we decided that uh, we would step up and, and help out as best we can. Um, and uh, that's going well. We've been running it for about five years now. And uh, we're starting to pick up contracts here and there to help pay some bills, Norwegian cruise lines. Uh, we do standby for all the cruise ships that come in. And um, we have now graduated. We're going to be bringing a fire service as well to Hopkins. And uh, David with Remax and myself are working on that, getting a fire truck down here. So um, we're we're busy. Um, we have. I'm also a, a Remax realtor with David. And um, one more thing, we have an island that we are developing. So we will be opening an uh, island resort probably in the first quarter of 2023. So we're busy people. Yes. Yes, you are. So, man, so um, great to have you back. And, and one of the reasons why I wanted to have you back, Evan, was just with inflation that we see going on in the world, um, kind of wanted to give our listeners kind of, you know, what's going on with building and inflation. Um, we sell, in my opinion, we sell more lots than we yes. do houses. And so what people do is they build a lot now or they buy a lot now and then they build a little later and so if you want to tell us um you know what we have some pre-selected questions from uh kevin um thanks a lot kevin for sending them over so i'm going to go ahead and and everyone for while you're listening to these questions and we answer them if you have any just throw them in the chat box or the question and answer box sorry um, the question and answer box and, and um, we'll get to them. Um, some questions are for strictly for Evan and then um, and then some of the questions are for both of us. 
Um, so one of the questions, Evan, is what type of structure do you feel is better suited for the rainforest jungle climate in the mountains along the Hummingbird Highway? Um, and then he went on to list, you know, wood, concrete combination, block foundation, port cement, um, insulation, no insulation, um, what type of insulation. Um, he's <laughs> asking about rafters and trusses, which we really don't use here, but he's asking about a foot or two foot overhang. Okay. Um, so let's just take that one for now. Sure. Okay. Um, in the inland, um, up and towards the mountains and into the, the tropical part where it's very, very humid, very hot, um, I would suggest complete concrete construction. Um, wood is going to be your enemy there. Um, you will still have maintenance on a concrete building. That's irregardless of where you are, you're going to have it. Um, it's just a matter of, of how you lay out your building. Um, you're going to want a concrete foundation, concrete walls. Um, you're building a concrete roof. You would be able to do a sloped roof if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted to complete a complete concrete home, um, it can be done. Um, but most people down here will do concrete walls, concrete foundations, and then um, like a rafter, like a truss style roof or an open rafter, uh, they call it, where it's an exposed hardwood beam. And then you can put a, a, a tongue and groove hardwood ceiling up, or you could just do, they call it a, it's a called T111. It's a manufactured plywood ceiling, but it looks like hardwood slats. And then above that, you can put an insulation barrier in there. So um, you would cavity fill the concrete block walls to give yourself some insulation. Um, I've had lots of people ask me for extra insulation because they do a lot of research on how hot and humid it is here. Um, and people have asked me about strapping the interior walls with lumber and then insulating the inside of a concrete wall um, and then sheetrocking the inside. Uh, I, I agree with that sense um i've built wood homes here i've built concrete homes um they all have their merits uh, depending on where you are um it, it, it's as long as the builder knows what they're doing when it comes to wood construction concrete construction um you should be fine with an overhang on your roof i would suggest at least an 18 inch overhang um, more than the standard down here is a two foot overhang keeping water away from your foundations. So um, the further you can keep all of that rainwater away, the better. Um, you're also gonna be using rain catchment up in the up in the mountains in the tropical areas and in the rainforest. So um, a good set of downspouts and gutters to some some water catchment is is a good idea as well. So there's there's a lot of different ways that you can build, but um, in the jungle, concrete would be best. Good, very good. Um, he's also asking the appropriate lead time needed from after approving the build to start construction. So I guess to get the materials and all that uh, for okay. the foundation. And stuff. Okay, so um, with our construction company, the way we work it, um, we, we try and work hand in hand with you and your engineer. Um, we would like to be involved with emails back and forth between during the design process so that we know, we try and get inside the customer's head so that we know exactly what they want and, and go from finished product backwards to foundation um, so that we know every step of the journey all the way along. And doing that makes the job easier for us and it also will make it go faster because we will know what materials we need. Um, the design process is, is easier. A lot of times the engineers will not um, grasp the concept of, of what the homeowner wants. And that's where we can step in and we can help the bridge the um, knowledge gap between the engineer and the build and the customer to help streamline the process a little bit. Um, once the drawings are all sorted out and the engineer gets everything approved, they, uh, most engineers down here will pull your building permit for you as well. Um, 
And then from there, as soon as we get the building permit, um, we are already talking to the client and we have um, funds are in place. We start foundations a week after we get our building permit. We're on site making sure everything is is ready. We get out the, the foundation, the string lines, and we make sure we get your foundation squared up. We start right away. Um, concrete construction is a little bit slower than wood construction. A concrete home typically takes between uh, 10 and 12 months to complete. Um, I just finished a wood construction home with concrete siding, like a James Hardy concrete siding, uh, in five months. So you can pretty much cut the timeline in half with wood construction um, so it does go up much quicker uh, because you can have on site you do not have to wait for anything concrete you're waiting for it to cure step by step as you go up okay. so um, you can't just throw a coat of paint on the walls the next day you have to let that concrete cure and the plaster cure before you can paint whereas wood you're putting wood you're putting sheetrock mud tape sand paint in three four days so wood is much faster but there are a lot more steps in a wood home to make it uh, longevity of a home down here because of the salt the humidity um, it has to be done right and, and you have to use the proper building product to keep it that way so um, wood construction down here the way we build homes in canada um, Everybody is wondering what we're doing when we're building a home because we're adding a whole lot of different things to the house that you would never see before, like house wrap and, and insulation, vapor barriers, uh, a lot of different stuff like that that just isn't used here and, and also is to get here. So um, we try and prepare as much as we can in advance. Very good. What are you seeing with prices? Um, that's not one of his questions, but... I wanted to ask, what are you seeing as far as prices? 10%, 20%? I mean, I know some things are 30, 40%, <clears throat> some yeah. 5%. Overall, a house construction would be about how much more with what's going on now? In the last six months, um, I would say inflation here has gone on average over the entire cost of a home, probably about 20%. Wow. Yeah, it is very, um, we have the, the, the lumber issue that happened in the States and the massive rising cost of everything in the States. That didn't happen in Belize for the first six months after it happened in the U.S. and Canada. Um, their prices have now adjusted and they're coming down. Ours still have not gone down and they probably won't go down because... They, they basically buy from the U.S. And if their price has gone down, well, great. That supplier makes more money selling to you. So their prices probably aren't going to come right back down to where they were before. There might be a drop, but it's not going to be much. So that just, you, you, you take your lumps, you, you move forward. Right, man. But before we get to Kevin's other questions, let me just... Uh go to the question and answer box. And thank you for all your answers. And Charles is like fire and EMS, awesome. Yes, uh, Evan and Sandra and myself, we both have uh, fire and EMS backgrounds and, and we have a love for that. So we try to, you know, that's how we give back is, is through that. Mm -hmm. um, we also do a lot, they do a lot with the Hopkins Humane Society and, and I do, um, I'm not I'm not doing as much now that I'm back and forth from Placencia and San Pedro, but we do a lot for the Humane Society in Placencia. Um, so Brad's asking that y'all sound busier in Belize than I am in the U.S. What if I want to escape the rat race? Will I fit in? <laughs> Brad, that's a good question. And really, it kind of depends on you. Some people get kind of bored. Um, I don't think Evan came down here to retire. <laughs> Um, no. I sure as heck didn't come down here to retire. Um, once you come down here, you just kind of see all this opportunity. And, you know, my mentors say, you know, you fix somebody's problems or you find a problem and you fix it. And that's how you make money. Um, and so that's kind of what we're doing. 
Um, you know, I'm sure Evan has seen a lot of shoddy construction. Um, I know I have, and I'm not in construction. <laughs> so, um, and he does it. Um, on your hardy hardy backer that you just did, was that like four by eight sheets or was it planks? No, it's actually uh, planks, seven and a quarter sheet, seven and a quarter by 12 foot. Oh, yep. I love Same it. as you get in the US. Awesome. Yeah. In the US. awesome. <laughs> So Emma's asking, in a business where money is exchanged between North America and Belize often and in large amounts, what is the best bank and banking arrangement to facilitate ease in transacting business? Um, so that's a good question, Emma. Um, you know, you there's really two main big banks, Belize Bank and Atlantic, uh, with a few smaller credit unions and things like that. And I think all of them are fine. Um, Belize has never had a local bank fail. We've had some international banks fail, but no local banks. They have a very high liquidity rate. Um, so you just you could ask or apply to get a U.S. dollar account and a Belize dollar account. Then you can transact between the two. There's a lot of paperwork involved. Um, there is uh, you do have to get that bank account renewed every year. So you have to qualify through the central bank every year. Um, but then once it's here, you, you, you're able to move um, money back and forth. Now you can't just move it just to move it. You have to have a reason. Like when we send money down to pay taxes for our sales, we try to keep as much money offshore as we can in the U.S. Um, but when we send money down for, you know, taxes, um, stamp tax, things like that. We have to provide a copy of passports. We have to provide copy of sales agreements and everything to support why we're sending down X amount of money. So if you can, I'd say try to stay away from opening a bank account here. But if you're doing something, you can. Um, what's the typical interest and fees when it comes to financing construction and beliefs? Um, is there construction financing available um, or mortgage financing through institutions? If so, what's the typical terms? Vendor financing, typical terms. Um, also good questions. Um, I'll answer part of it and then see, you know, Evan can, can um, chime in. Um, I have seen uh, locals or I've heard locals get uh, some financing, some construction financing. Um, normally they want the lot paid off and possibly even more. Um, so if you have two or three lots, they want to kind of encumber all three lots. Um, they're not gonna do a, a construction financing with just a lot. Um, or if they do, you're gonna have to pay a certain amount and then they'll do draws with inspection. So it's not impossible, um, but the banks tend to be kind of hard. Um, financing is going to be around 10%. It's going to be around a 15 year amateurization with like a five year balloon that you can refinance. Um, that's what I have on my uh, small resort in Hopkins. Uh, vendor financing is going to be a 20, well, a 10 to 30 year amateurization with a balloon payment in three, five, seven, 10 years. It's all negotiated upon the contract and then interest rates will be between five and 10%, depending on how much you put down. Um, Evan, you want, are you seeing anything different? No, that's, that's typical what we see as well. Um, most, most house builds that we get and that we deal with, um, the, the clients already have their fund place in the US um, and, and all we, like David was saying about, about moving your money down here, there are a lot of things to jump through to even just do a wire. Um, you have to provide why you are sending money here. So we have contracts, we have passports, we have everything that we have to send in ourselves. Our company has to send into the bank. And then on your end, you will have to do all of that as well, just to wire me money to build. They want your first form. They want everything because of money laundering. They're very, very, very scared of money laundering 
because, like David said, there's never been a bank fail in Belize, and no one's going to let that happen over a potential money laundering issue. So they they cover every little check mark and every little and T cross. They they make sure that everything covered. Yes, they do, and I think a lot of it too is comes from the U.S. I think the U.S. puts a lot of pressure on Belize. And so Belize or the U.S. has these enormous fines if they are caught. And so they kind of take it to the nth degree because I can send. I mean, I just sent a couple million dollars to a seller and I did nothing from Chase Bank. Whereas if I send myself a thousand dollars from Chase (laughs) Bank to my account here, I have to justify why I'm doing it. Um, so it's kind of a pain and, and you have to reg- depend on what business it is. You have to register yeah. with the FIU, yeah. the financial yeah. intelligence yeah. unit. Um, so again, it's not, and you might get denied. Um, I know several people that have got denied that want U S accounts. Um, or if you have one and you're doing stuff that they don't like, they could take it away from you, even if it's a legit business. Um, so Charles is saying that him and his wife love to give back in a similar way. Um, if we're looking for equipment, um, they'll be retiring some very soon. Um, that's awesome. Um, Evan yeah. just uh, they just uh, got a fire truck that we're going to be sending down on the Denton program for Hopkins. Um, but we're always looking for trucks or equipment. Um, mm-hmm. I also volunteer with Believe in Belize, and twice a year we send containers down, so we can even send this stuff um, on a container. Um, I know I'm looking for like maybe some um, Hamatro tools or some spreaders, cutters or something like that. Um, I'd like to have a set in the South. Um, I also am looking for, um, we need wheelchairs um, pretty mm-hmm. badly. Yes. Um, so I don't know. What else can you think of? Um, wheelchairs is a huge one. Um, yeah. Hospitals don't have any to give out. They, they wouldn't give them out. They would rent them to you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think the number one thing we get asked for is wheelchairs. So yes. uh, if anybody knows anybody that can get us any, it would yes. be amazing. Yeah. And they don't have to be new as long as they, they're used. And we just got like eight of them with no foot rest. So it would be nice if we had some foot rest. <laughs> Um, and I'm looking for a cascade system so we can fill up SCBA bottles. Uh, right now we have to send them to Belize city or, you know, it's just hard to fill them up. Whereas if we could have several of those throughout the country, you know, it'd be a lot easier to fill them up. Yeah. So, um, Christian's asking, or Kristen is asking, do you recommend an IBC to own property in Belize? Um, I, I like it. Um, For several reasons. Um, I don't own any property in an IBC. Um, I have everything in LLCs, um, either a Belize LLC, a Chapter 250 is what we call it, or a U.S. LLC that is registered in Belize. And I'm sure Evan might have a, you know, some Canadian companies that are registered here. Um, Just remember, though, that a Belize IBC cannot own property in Belize. So if you're wanting to buy property in Belize, you have to open a Nevis or Anguilla, um, Bahamian or something like that. One of those IBCs. Um, But they are good for privacy protection, asset protection. Um, You know, we're not uh, we just give information out. We're not lawyers or accountants, but um, we would ask you to check with your team. Um, But that's how. I understand it, and and that's what we like. We do like to use it. Um, there's a big reason why it's nice to have property in an IBC is because it gets rid of the 8% stamp tax um, if you're transferring it from one person to the next. So it's really good. So we're about top of the hour or, you know, at 630. Uh, so we got about 30 more minutes. So keep your questions coming. Um, we're kind of all done on here now. Um, So I'm going to go back to some of uh, Kevin's uh, questions. Um, Who would you recommend for solar? Um, There's a few companies in Belize. 
Yeah, Pro Solar is a good company. Um, they actually sell Tesla systems, uh, so you can get Tesla systems here. They're very expensive. Um, again, everything is imported. Nothing is created here. So you're shipping all those heavy batteries and bulky solar panels. So the cost of stuff is very expensive when it comes to solar uh, in pertaining to Tesla systems. Now there's comparable systems in Belize that uh, a lot of the Mennonites use. Um, a lot of the Mennonite communities, the industrial side of those um Mennonites like there's uh Peter's glass shop that makes PVC windows and doors um coop sheet metal that does all the tin roofing their businesses they have 150,000 square foot facilities completely run off of solar their roofs are completely yeah. covered in solar panels and they run 100% solar so um it's it's available here and it, it is it can be affordable um, depending on what you want and, and how you live. If you run air conditioning all the time and you have all electric appliances and, and a lot of that stuff, you're going to draw a lot of power. Um, therefore, your solar system is going to be very expensive. Or you can, you can lay it out so that, okay, my lights and my ceiling fans are on this grid, which is my solar grid, and this is on the, the power grid. Um, it can it split up and done whatever way you want it to do. But Belize does not pay back to you as a consumer. If you put grid and you create more than um, you're putting out, they will not buy it back from you. It's just lost. So um, we're not at that stage. Solar's still coming in here. Um, they are using it to power villages in the south. The power company, uh, EPL, has invested quite a bit of money in solar uh, because they found that it's cheaper to put solar systems in these villages, remote villages, than it is to string power and put poles in. Uh, so they'll just buy a big grid, put it in there, and it'll power two or three villages for them. So uh, it is getting more noticeable down here in the south. Where it's 10 miles down a dirt road across a river to get to these villages. Um, it's easier to put a solar system in. Yes. Yeah, very good. Um, I've heard a rumor, I don't know if you've heard it, Evan, that uh, BEL is going to soon start to buy back. Um, if you, I don't know if y'all know or not, but we get most of our electricity from Mexico and then they upcharge it so they can put the grid in and maintain it and things like that. Um, so I, I do know there's a guy, LB in Placencia, that's starting to create some package systems um where you can run pretty much everything but we do get a lot of rain uh depending on where you're at um so you definitely want some batteries and things like that um septics he's asking about septics as well um i mean in the rainforest pretty much septics regular are, septic. yeah up in the up in the hills and away from water sources like the ocean the lagoons and stuff like that um, you will just be putting in a regular, like a concrete three chambered tank and then a leach field. Um, you get anywhere near a water source. The um, central building authority is now starting to crack down a little more on what you can use for a septic system. They have to be a little bit more modern than just a leach field. Uh, they, they call it an aerobic system where it injects air into the tank and uh, keeps everything moving keeps the effluent moving and helps it break down more um, so that what comes out and, and into the leach field is much less bacteria and more just a, a liquid so that it can just leach away and there's less harmful bacteria and it leaches down into the water table. So um, we're just, and I agree 100% with it. Um, it does cost more, but if you look at the cost of a septic system in the United States, it is still much cheaper here to put in a septic system like that. So um, you're looking at probably 25, 30,000 US to put in a septic system in the United States. Easy for a small house. Down here, that would put in probably three of those systems. So it's still affordable to do it the correct way and follow the guidelines. Um, we noticed that they're being more enforced now. A lot of times they never were. Uh, the central building authority would tell you what you had to do, but they would never come and inspect anything you did. 
So there's no, there's no recourse if you did something wrong or you cut corners or did this or did that. Um, the last house I built, um, they came once to check, check my foundations and I was already putting the granite on the countertops in the house. <laughs> so they were a little bit behind on, on getting there, but they, they even said themselves, there's only six of us that do the entire country. So yeah. what do you expect? You can't keep up. But the last wood house that I did that I was building and I got finished in five months, I got two inspections in five months. So they're getting better at coming back and checking on things. And um, they will stop you if you're not doing it correctly. They will put a stop work order. So, And then they tell people in the village to, hey, here's my card. If you see these people building after we leave, call us. And then you get a big fine. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so Charles is asking, uh, is there access to natural gas or propane? We do use butane here. Um, yeah. Is there anything other options for power other than solar? Um, I've heard of people doing some hydro like water. Um, they set up little things themselves. I don't know if you've seen anything. Um just i've seen a couple little wind projects but just so, and something enough to you know run a couple ceiling fans and some lights in an apartment under like a, a secondary efficiency apartment but um wind doesn't produce unless you're putting one of those massive turbines in your yard um wind doesn't produce enough power to generate energy to run an ac or your fridge um it would run a few things but not enough uh, they just can't produce enough. You'd need 10 of them in your yard to to do anything for you. And then the cost efficiency, it's not worth it for wind. Right. And we do have some dams. Um, yep. I think there's, what, one or two dams in the country? Yep. Um, so we are trying to produce more and try to get away from Mexico. But again, majority of it is is from Mexico. Um, is it better to get a wood house or a concrete home? Um, we touched on that earlier. Um, I guess it depends on where you're at um, and who builds it. I mean, everybody's like, stay away from wood homes, but I've seen wood homes, you know, especially in Charleston where we were from and, and even here in Placencia, I know of homes that have withstood Hurricane Iris in 2001, I think is, it was. Um, so as long as it's built right, yep. you know, I, I'd be fine. Uh, a wood home, if it's built correctly, should withstand a hurricane. And um, as far as being efficient, a wood home is, if it's built correctly and insulated correctly, is far more efficient than a concrete home. Far more efficient when it comes to heating and cooling. Yes, I agree. Um, so here's one for you. Treated wood pier construction, risk and lifespan, termites. Um, Pier construction, wood pier construction—is that like a like for um, the water? Or yeah, like a dock. Like, or columns yeah, going um, to bed. A lot of people still do wood construction when it comes to docks. They'll drive um, basically salt-treated telephone poles into the ground, yep. out into the water, and then frame it and then deck it with with pressure-treated lumber. Um, I, I've also seen quite a few docks actually in the last year go in in Hopkins here uh, with uh, PVC and they're driving PVC down then they pump the water out that's in there and they fill them full of concrete. That is uh, to me a much much better option uh, because they don't wear out they don't rot there is no termite issue uh, so they'll be around for 100 years. Um, and it, you would just you would still have your framing and your and your your decking that you would have to upkeep and, and maintain but um having to do that versus having to replace posts out in the water after say five ten years uh, is a much easier option if you just have to do some maintenance on your dock yeah and, and i know of houses too here that are built with uh wood piers um, at Mahogany, we use bullet tree, um, mm -hmm. and bullet tree goes down to bedrock. Um, I don't, but I've seen the Mennonites use wood as well. I don't think they're using bullet tree. 
Um, they're probably just using what just treated lumber or something like that. Yeah. Typically when, when I see somebody build a dock, I know somebody building a dock because uh, a truckload of telephone poles comes into town. So yes. um, because it's, it's cost effective, it's much cheaper than PVC, but yes. in the long run, is it really cheaper? So right. you got to weigh your pros and cons. Right. Exactly. So Bill's asking, is there any micro hydropower? Um, what's micro hydro? So I guess what that would be like the dams, right? Or. Yeah. I, uh, like there's a Chaleo dam, which is down South. And there's another hydro dam in the North somewhere. I can't remember where, but uh, yeah, we, I think we have two or three in Belize. They don't produce a ton, but um, I think they produce. 20% or 23% or something like that of the power of that we use in Belize. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andre is asking the building cost between Cayo and Placencia or Hopkins, if you will. Um, I'm not sure as far as, as Cayo. Um, I don't, I don't, I build around Hopkins, uh, Riversdale, Maya Beach, Placencia area. Um, I, I've never built anything up in the Kyle area. Um, people tell me it's cheaper to build up there, but you're using the same materials. Really, I don't think it would cost any different. Um, labor would be your biggest thing. Uh, the more inland you go and the more towards Guatemala and Mexico you go, um, you can find cheaper labor, but you're also going to find skilled cheaper labor so again you're getting unskilled cheap labor to build your home that you're paying a few hundred thousand dollars for so uh, you, you pay for what you get i guess for lack yeah. of a term yeah and i think a lot of the builders in cayo and corazal they they'll just run the border run to Guatemala from Cayo and get building supplies cheaper or the same with uh, um, Corazal going into Mexico. Um, yeah. But yeah, as you go away from the tourist destinations, the cost of living tends to be a little cheaper. And yeah. so labor is cheaper as well. So, um, so Bill's asking for a 10 kW hydropower off river or stream. Um, so is that possible? Um, I'm not sure how a hydro system would set up for a home near a river. It all, it will depend on your flow rate and all of that right. to, That's what I would think. to create everything. So I'm not sure, right. um, because you'd be spinning turbines and stuff like that. You'd have a pretty good flow. And I know the river, I live on the river and, um, the river in front of my house 80% of the year, it's moving me two miles an hour. Like it, it's not going to move a turbine fast enough to create 10 kilowatts of power. I, I don't see it. That's what I would think. So thank you so much for your questions. Um, so Kevin has a couple more. Um, what are some do's and don'ts and materials to stay away from? So when it comes to building, well, uh, again, it all depends on how your house was built. Um, there are a few, a few well, I've learned a lot um, coming down here because we don't build with concrete in Canada. We build with wood. So um, learning concrete was, was tough for us. Um, and then there's a few products that we try and stay away from. Um, a lot of people will use it's called plysum or uh, like a, it's not really a concrete board. It is, but it does absorb water. So um, we learned the hard way that you can't use it on the exterior of a home anywhere. Um, we were told you could, and we ended up having problems where we had to go pull the side of a house off and redo the siding. So um, that was, that was something we learned the hard, way. Uh, cost us a bit of cash, but um, we learned from our mistakes. Uh, if your house is watertight and um, you need to keep air moving in your homes, uh, down here in Belize, there's no furnace, there's no forced air, there's no 
nothing. So you have to move air in your home. Uh, if you don't, your air gets stagnant and you will start getting mold on your walls. Um, therefore, if you do that, I don't recommend a sheetrock home, uh, plywall. Um, I would suggest a concrete home, but even in a concrete home, um, paint has a moisture content to it. So if you walk away from your home and say you build a home and, and you're going to use it for vacation only, you come for three months and you're gone for nine. Um, in those nine months, if you don't have air movement, and you come back, your house is going to be green inside. It'll be furry. Um, yeah. So the, it's not necessarily products to stay away from. It's learning to deal with the heat, humidity, and and how to how to work with the, the temperatures and everything here. Not really what to stay away from. Everything has its purpose and its place. Uh, everything is useful in beliefs. Um, it's just a matter of, of, of how you how you use it, I guess. Exactly. And, and then, you know, if you're going to be away, use, uh, use, uh, like a dehumidifier. Um, I know myself, I like using the green board throughout the whole house, the green sheetrock for bathrooms instead of regular sheetrock. Um, I personally prefer wood over concrete. Um, so it's you know but it's just up to everyone and i'd say one of the biggest don'ts and i see it all too often is don't pay your contractor in full you know um i'm dealing with that now you know and then they wonder why the house isn't built um you know and i mean i have a swimming pool with no drain um so they just they paid the contractor in full wasn't Evan. <laughs> so, um, but it, it just, you know, it's just use common sense when you're building even more so here um, because yes. the laws are a little different here. You know, there's no, it, it's just hard. Just, just be cautious, you know, and talk to reputable builders, talk to reputable agents. Um, and even, you know, just, Make sure the contract is is well explained, not a very simple contract, you know, because it leaves so much for interpretation, is my opinion. Yeah, we um, we have a very specific contract when it comes to a house build. It's right. um, what is included, what is not included. Um, and we will, and it's all dependent on the customer too. Um, if they give us carte blanche to do what we want, the contract will state that. Um, if they specifically want certain things in the home, we will list those certain things that they are getting in their home. Um, it protects us and it protects the, the owner. So, um, and you work off a draw system. Um, you, you pay us X amount of dollars and we get to this stage. Then we, we, we send pictures, videos all the way along. And when we get to that stage, we ask for the next draw. And then the next draw, we do it in thirds so that when we're done, we have a whole back of, say, $5,000 uh, for deficiencies. The homeowner comes down to the house. If there's any deficiencies, we fix them. Uh, when the homeowner's happy, they pay us that last $5,000. So um, it helps us. That actually helps with uh, moving the money down here as well, doing wire transfers. Um, they don't. The banks don't complain as much when you're not sending two hundred and fifty thousand dollars all at once. Um, if you're sending eight thousand dollar draws, they're more likely to do it because they get a copy of the contract and they can see where that money's going. It's not just going one shot to a to a builder. That's suspicious. So be yeah, just be be careful. And I always say, don't leave your brain at the border. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So Charles is asking, what's the best way to get educated about different housing options, building a home, buying a home, buying a condo? In my opinion, it's your agent, your real estate agent uh, should be educating you. That's kind of what we do. Um, I feel, and I'm sure Evan will tell you or agree that Belize sells itself. We don't need to sell you anything. What we need to do is educate you on what it's like to live here, buy here, build here, all that stuff. 
And then once you're educated and you come and visit, if Belize is for you, then we'll find something for you, whether it's a lot, a house, a condo, it's all based on, you know, what you want to do. If you're coming here for one week out of the year, I personally wouldn't own a home. I'd have a condo um, and let it, you know, get rented out, pay for itself. Um, or if you're looking for a lifestyle investment and you don't want it rented out, then still maybe a condo, you know, but if you're coming four or five times a year and eventually want to live here and you want a home, then, you know, you just want to, we'll educate you. So find an agent that's, that's right for you. Um, we're not here to sell anything. We're here to educate. Um, but we do sell real estate. So if you would like to use us, Serena's going to put in the chat box, um, how to get a hold of, of us, um, how to get a hold of Evan with the construction company and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so Andrea is asking, is it hard um, for you to become a contractor in Belize? Um, <laughs> yes and no. Um, we have, we actually had a background uh, in construction down here. Um, that obviously helped. But again, like I said, um, concrete was a, a new thing for us and uh, planning, you have to plan much further ahead when working with concrete because you can't just take the sheetrock off the wall and change the electrical if you screwed it up. Well, it's in six inches of concrete now. What do you do? So there's a lot more planning that goes into it. Um, as far as business wise, becoming a contract, um, it was the same as, as it would have been in the U S or in Canada or anywhere else in the world. Uh, you get your license, uh, you set up your business with the lawyer, uh, you get a bank account established and start work. Um, your name will speak volumes, uh, your reputation, how you do work, um, how you work with customers. Um, I have, I have lost house jobs uh, because I've told the people that they're not ready to build a home here yet. Um, get a referral from, from a realtor to, to me as a builder and they've already bought a piece of property and you're talking what they want to build and what they're going to do with it. And in the end, they don't build it. They just sit on their lot for a couple more years because they weren't ready to build a home yet. So it's a, it's a huge investment. And um, I wouldn't want someone just to take my money and build my house. And then a year later, I'm not where I thought I wanted to be. And, and it's not what I wanted it. So I would do that to anybody else. I don't want, so I, I try and, and talk to my clients and get in as to what they want and then uh, work with them. I, I'm trying not to, to steer people away from moving down here. I, would, I want a lot of people to be out here. I want everybody to be happy and enjoy believe it's a beautiful place. But uh, if I was in Hawaii, if I was in Costa Rica, it wouldn't matter. Um, it still would be the same way. Uh, making sure that people are getting what they want and really is this what they want. Um, I've had people turn around and sell the lot again because they realized they don't want to build a house. Um, all the decisions they wanted to, or they were going to have to make and all of that, they never even thought about all that when buying the lot. They just decided they're going to buy a lot and they're going to build a house. And then I started inundating them with questions about, this, do you want this? Do you want that? What about this? What about that? Are you going to live in it? Are you going to retire here? Are you going to rent it out? Do you want access on the front of the house and the beach house? There's hundreds of questions. And they just said, you know what? We're not ready to do this. And they ended up listing their lot with me and, and selling it because they weren't ready. And they just said, we'll, we'll look at it again, maybe in about five years. So I always tell people I'm the worst realtor and the worst contractor in the world because I will turn away work if it's not the right work. So, yep. Yeah. Same here. And that's why we get along so good is because we have the same mindset as what's best for the client, not yeah. what's best for us. Um, because in Belize, it's a small country. All you have is your, your reputation. And right. it takes a lot of time to build a good reputation, but it only takes minutes to ruin a good reputation. <laughs> so, that's, you know, that's, I mean, I've told people not to buy here. It's just, it's not, it's not for you um, based on interviewing them. 
Um, so Shay, uh, you spoke about lot sales early in the show. What developments would you recommend in Placencia and San Pedro? We're interested in something with or near a marina to park a catamaran. Uh, we will be there for a week starting 10 8. Look forward to meeting you guys. Oh, hey, Shay. Um, thanks, friends. Okay. Um, let's say Placencia, where you can park a boat. Um, there's Seabird. There's Roberts Grove Marina. There's the Placencia Resort and Residences, um, Peninsula Club. There are several places in Placencia that you can buy and park at Cadmoran. Um, San Pedro, whew, um, it's only gonna be Salt Life and Mahogany Bay, but I'm not sure. Yeah, you could park at Cadmoran. You just have to, it's 35 foot canals and on the new part is 50 foot canals. Um, so you definitely would be able to park it in one of those areas. Uh, you can't leave it on the canal, so you have to actually cut into your lot. Uh, so depending on how big your catamaran <clears throat> is, you might have two lots or something like that. Um, in Hopkins, um, there's a marina in Hopkins, right? Phase five? Yeah, there's there's two marinas, actually. Um, there's the City River Marina and the Hopkins, or and then phase five marina. Um, so there, there's a couple places that you can you can have a cat and they, they can accommodate any size. I I've seen 53 foot cats in there. So. Yes. Yes. So very good. So uh, again, thanks everyone. Any last minute questions, go ahead and send it out. Um, but in the meantime, if not any closing thoughts, questions, uh, Evan, you have. Come down and check it out and enjoy it. I came down on a whim and I've been here eight years. <laughs> <laughs> I came in uh, 2004. I think it was four. Um, I think Serena was three or four. Um, and now she's, what, 25? Of course, she's not in Belize now, but she grew up here. So um, I think she put um, next month's all access is October 6th. Um, we're working on that guest. I think we're pretty close with a police officer. So if it's not that guest, it's going to be somebody else. We'll figure something out. Um, but appreciate everybody for joining this month. And mm -hmm. Evan, thanks for joining again and talking about um, building updates. Um, no problem. Um, Kevin, I'll, I'll reach out to some of your questions. Um, that uh, he had one on hunting license. Let me uh, just, since we have a few minutes, I'll, uh, I'll touch on that one. Uh, firearms, I'm not sure if we covered firearms in here. You can get a permit to carry a firearm. There's different types of permits. Um, I have a concealed carry, which is your special protection, um, but there is a, a hunting license that you can get. Um, not sure about crossbows. Do you know anything about crossbows? I, I don't know if that's... No, they sell them, not. but I don't know about hunting with them. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have to look into that. Um, I'll make a note to look in that. Um, to bring in a firearm into Belize, uh, you don't want to do it unless you have your license because uh, they will confiscate it. Um, and Belize has strict gun license rules. Um, so you're only allowed a hundred rounds at any given time and anything over that you can get go to jail for. So if you have 102, you can go to jail for that. Um, so what I do is when I buy new rounds, if I have anything over, I just put them in a Ziploc bag and I donate them to the police department. Um, so you can do that. Um, but once you get your license, I'm kind of going through the process now because I want to get a second a second firearm um, just because I've been doing some shooting and some competition stuff in the U.S. and there's a new one I like, um, but I don't want to get rid of my CZ. Um, so you just have to go through the application and I have a copy of the application. If you want to uh, send me an email, I can send it to you and uh, you just need to have some requirements and um, things like that. And there's some cost involved. It's for if you're not a, a, a citizen, if you're just a resident, 
um, it's 15, it's 500 Belize. If you're a, on a tourist visa, it's 1500 Belize a year per gun. And then once you're a citizen like myself, it's $75 uh, Belize a gun. So, um, and I did write a news article or a newsletter about it. I believe it's on our website at CaribbeanCapitalGroup.com. Um, and then the rest of it, I'll, we'll say for next month, but I'll go ahead and answer it for you, but we'll go ahead and keep it for next month as well. Um, and I think we had a question that somebody else asked that I wasn't sure on, and I haven't found the answer to it yet. Um, so it was a good question that stopped me. Um, so anyway, so thanks everyone for joining. Um, this will be on YouTube to listen to playbacks and all that and to share with your friends. And if you've enjoyed tonight, um, what I ask is uh, just pass it along. Uh, pass on the links so you can join because uh, we do these once a month and we're happy to do them. So thanks again, mm -hmm. Evan. Thanks, Serena and everyone. Thank you. See you in paradise soon.